fuck up. It's time to talk business. Jared Taylor, Matt Best, and Evan Hafer proudly present Blackhearted. Sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee Company and Arson Wave. Well, hello, everybody. So right now it's just me, JT, and we have a new special guest host or co-host that will probably become a regular co-host as well uh, to fill in when Matt and Evan are not here. His name is Daniel the Rapture Holloway. Is, you think that one's good? Yeah, it's good. I came up with that n- nickname right now. So what would the logo for that look like? Just people floating into the sky? No. And it clothes would, it, on the ground? It, it's just... Uh, the number 69 on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think that makes any sense, but let's do it. <laughs> no. I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? Everybody needs a logo. Some people look at the way things are and ask why. Something, <laughs> I don't know. There's a quote about that somewhere. All right. So, as always, we are, we are a business podcast, and we have a fellow business owner here. And it's he's a special business owner because he was a Navy SEAL. <laughs> hey, we got to drop that right off the bat. Right? Yeah, I think but I think uh, coming out of the book it's, soon. It's proper. It's proper to say that right away. But but you know you want a different route. You're not doing a book. You no. started a business. I did business. Yeah, went into the uh, into the cookie biz. The cookie, well, it's full treats, right? Full treats. Yeah, brownies, and, and chocolate bars, a little bit of right thing. Paleo treats. Paleo treats. Yep. Based out of San Diego, California. All right. And how long has it been in existence? We've been around since 2009, May 2009. So coming up on. All right. Well, yeah, that, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Nick Hawks, uh, owner very much. of Paleo Treats. And he comes at us because we have a mutual friend, right? Yep. Mr. V Diamond. Yeah, we got a couple of them. Yeah, pro- I'm, I'm sure there are many now. A yeah, bunch of guys floating around. Some start today. going down that list. It gets a little dark. <laughs> uh, you know, something Evan and I did recently is we purchased uh, NavySealsOnly.com. Nice. It's a it's a dating site for seals that want to date other seals. Well, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of action. There. <laughs> well, if there's a website for people that own tractors, certainly they're going to be one for seals, right? Well, I mean, you know, our slogan is is. Are you tired of talking about buds to somebody that doesn't get it? That's a winner. That's a winner. I got. I got nothing on that. Jesus. So let's hear. This let's hear life. about how this how this came about. You know, what? Uh, we'll we'll go with the history. Sure. And then and then jump into to maybe, uh, you know, one of the big hurdles that you'd faced in because I mean this is one of those things, especially with food. Like, there's a lot of liability there. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I'm I'm interested to hear what what kind of what kind of insurance or what kind of stuff that takes when you're dealing with a food product. Sure, history stuff. So 2009, a friend of mine moved from the East Coast, out the West Coast, San Diego, is stationed out there, and he was eating hardcore paleo. Um, he was going to buy a house in a part of San Diego I didn't think that he would enjoy. So I said, "Come stay with us until you figure out a place you want to live." And he moved in with my wife and I. He was, like I said, super hardcore paleo, and we said it's way easier to do what this guy wants than to fight it because we didn't really care about food that much. And started eating it, did all the usual kind of cult paleo things, bought in, you know, no gluten, no grain, no dairy, felt better, slept better, thought better, stronger, faster, etc. And then a couple weeks into it, we said, all right, what, what are we going to do for dessert? And there was no dessert on the market at the time. There was only one other prepackaged food on the market. So we sat down and uh, we made about... 2,000 treats up in our kitchen, which is a quarter of the size of this room. It's like a 12 by 12 foot kitchen. So we're all bumping into each other and swearing and cursing. Took them up to the CrossFit Games, which is a three day event, and uh, put a little table out, our sign, and it sold Was that up. eight or was that nine? Oh, nine. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nine. So it was the third games, I think. And uh, sold out the morning of the second day. And people are lining up at the booth and they're like, hey, can I buy everything you have? And I said, no. Look at the folks behind you. Like, you buy everything I have, they're going to have a problem with you and me, and I don't want problems anymore. <laughs> so we went back and said, we can, we're never going to make them in the kitchen again. Uh, let's figure out a way to do this at scale, and let's focus on stuff that we're really good at, um, which is it's kind of the recipe development is fun for my wife, and it was fun for Dave, but really we were much better at looking at a bigger picture and saying, hey, what, what do we want to deliver here? And it's not just a treat. Uh, it's this idea that when we went into business, we said, why are we in business? Uh, number one, to add beauty, quality, and joy to the world. 
number two to have fucking fun and number three to make money and paleo or treats i like number two yeah many many people do yeah yeah. Yeah, that's important um you know treats weren't really a part of the mission an integral part of the mission from day one it was always like a much bigger picture and what we wanted to to do with the company so that's kind of the genesis you know fast forward a couple crossfit games and uh, a bunch of people finding out about uh paleo is the crossfit games kind of like your shot show like where it where certainly you, was every yeah. year it keeps getting bigger and bigger for you guys so it did and yeah they there was always super cool to kind of see the same people coming back and they would say oh, i remember when your treats cost two bucks a piece and I'm like oh well i'll give you that price if you remember that price i'll give it to you they're not that anymore and then we just stopped going and we said as paleo got way bigger than crossfit um Let's see if we can serve some more people and, and get them on board and, and give them what they're asking for. Oh, yeah, I know a lot of guys that even older people that aren't really using any kind of uh, particular workout plan that are using paleo just for the, you know, the health benefits. Yeah, that's wild. It's we're talking. About I mean, I've never sure. I, I've never researched it. And now I'm like, I kind of want to try it. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people out there pretending to have celiac disease, especially where in the Bay Area where I just moved from. And celiac disease is like gluten intolerance, right? Yeah. So a lot of that stuff is faddish, I guess. But after it's 10 just another thing where you you get attention from right when, yeah, when you're course. out with everybody. Yeah. yeah oh like, no, I'm. I, I need the I have uh, celiac yeah, disease. Of course. But only. Oh my god, what is that? It's only like maybe three percent of the population that has it. Right. It's it's when your it's dong hurting. inflates <laughs> up like a balloon. <laughs> <laughs> you can just make things up at that right. point. <laughs> yeah, but there's uh, you know after you know a good decade of of that stuff being trendy i guess um research is starting to show that there's quite a bit of health benefits from it I yeah mean, quite a bit yeah i mean one thing i found with with paleo treats and paleo in general is that everybody is about as tied to their diet as they are to religion and politics and it's way easier for us to just find the to be found by the people who want to find us than it right. is to convince everybody that hey the diet you should be on is right whatever it is like yeah. if it works if veganism works for you, go for it. If you want to do paleo, if you want to do a pescatarian, if you want to be a fruitarian, like none of that stuff matters to us. It's like, hey, when you're ready for a dessert that fits these guidelines, then we're here for you. Right. So that's good. Yeah, so uh, we were talking to um, one of the band members from Breaking Benjamin yesterday, and, and it came up. Um, he was discussing, or Jared asked him about the second album because there's this rule, and uh, Jared could explain this better than I can, that your first album takes your whole life to write and then the second one you only get two years right yeah yeah so that and that's that's like a uh saying in the music industry you have your, right. you have your whole life to write the first album but only two years to write the second meaning like once that first album breaks you have to get to work if and and that second album is what is what differentiates between right. if you fall off the face of the earth after number two or if you do 10 right so and the reason why that he had brought that up is we were talking about you know guys that that party hard that, right. that that their first their first trip when they've broken out spend it just you know going off right, going off yeah. the handle and he's like that's not that's, that's not, not professional yeah, yeah. that's not where that's the wrong time to do it yeah if you, you want to make do a living that do when it. you've done eight records right yeah. like and and every time you say you're coming to a town it sells out and th- right. then you can fucking not care yeah, <laughs> yeah. so so the reason i brought that up is you say you had a lot of early success at CrossFit Games. So what, what was your sophomore pitch? Like, what did you do next? Like your second, you know, thing. How did you take advantage of the, you know, momentum the success? that yeah. you gained yeah. from the CrossFit Games? Um, so it's going back to the very beginning. Is we didn't really know. I don't know what we were doing. We'd had a bunch of businesses before, and uh, most of them had failed. And so we knew what we didn't want to do, but we still hadn't figured out kind of the the one, two, three steps to success. Like I knew I wanted to put out quality. I knew I wanted to treat people really well. I wanted to give ripping customer service and I wanted to put a bunch of beauty out into the world. And that's, that's, those were the guidelines that we had. But from CrossFit, we just kind of kept letting people find us and we weren't super active on like, okay, our demo is a 52 to 57 year old man who does this, this, and this. It's like, Man, I'm just going to put out the best content I can put out. I'm going to put out the best treats I can put right. out, put up, you know, best of everything, and then see what happens. So you just kind of leaned on your value proposition more than trying to, like you said, convince anybody. Yeah. And, and you found that works pretty well for you. It, it does. I mean, 
everybody decides what they want to do when they go into business, right? right? So some people want to make a billion dollars. Some people want to make a million dollars. Some people want to make their payments. For us, what we wanted to do is to put out this high quality product with service and all the rest of it. But we also wanted to have kind of the rest of our lives. And we, neither of us wanted to do something that was a 25, eight kind of thing where we're just crushing all the time. Like I want to go paragliding. I want to go run. I want to go do a million other things. And my wife Lee wants to do her own thing. So it was, it was just, if we focus our energy on doing the best we can, when it's time to do that, then we don't have to be hammering all the time. And it's funny because honestly, the, the episode that'll air before this is the history of silencer co. And that was something that Josh had identified early on was the grotesque lack of customer service in the silencer world. And that's where he put all his focus on. Said, you know what? I'm going to be a silencer company that you can pick up the phone and call and ask a question to, and someone will answer every time. And that focus turned into him owning 80% of the market. Right. Yeah. It's funny how it works. Funny how it works. And we've seen a bunch of people come up with paleo desserts, but they miss whatever it is, whether they miss the quality part and they're doing something that's not a paleo ingredient or they missed the customer service part. There was a man back in, in 2010, maybe there's a guy who saw that we were doing really well and he decided he wanted to get in the paleo dessert game and he hired a bunch of, gosh, like 17, 18 year old kids to do his customer service. They sent out a, you know, sent out a box of whatever it was, oatmeal, paleo cookies or paleo oatmeal cookies or whatever their thing was, never got there. So the customer calls in and says, hey, uh, where's, my, where's my box? And they didn't, didn't respond, didn't do anything. So she starts emailing and sending this in. And this is when CrossFit was still really tight and everybody kind of paid attention to what everybody else was doing. She emails in and says, hey, now, you know, by now it's been six months. You guys have been blowing me off, blah, blah. And she was really mad. And the dude who wrote it back was some, some kid who didn't care. And he's like, I hate customers like you. We don't want customers like you. I hope your house, I hope, hope you die in a fiery car crash was the... <laughs> was the, oh my God, the that's kind of aggressive. Yep. And that went, so she copied and pasted that email and put it on, you know, the forum. CrossFit forum. Yep. And it went bananas yeah. and people were like, Hey, no one touch, no one touched those guys. And so you look at like, what do you want to do? I didn't try their stuff. Maybe it was really good. Maybe it wasn't, but man, if you don't have that customer service piece down and if you're not driven to take care of, of the folks who are literally paying your mortgage and paying your bills, yeah. you're not going to be around that long. No. Not at all. No, that's <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> it is. That's a crazy story. I mean, really, really stupid. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. What uh, what's next then? Where's the where's the next move uh, for you guys? For PT, it's a it's a good question. So we've kind of we're at the point now where we're getting found. I think as much as we're going to in an organic sense, yeah. right? So if oh you, wait, actually, let me back up one question. Sure. Yep. Are you shipping internationally? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Uh, from the very beginning, we saw that paleo and food and the internet were this really good combination and that we could, and we've developed this idea over the years. So now it sounds much more polished than it initially was, but because you have the internet, you can sell, you can find and sell to exactly the people who want to find and buy from you. And that wasn't the case even a year or two before we started right, is that it used to be that if you wanted especially food, you went down to your grocery store. And if they didn't have it, you go to Whole Foods. And if Whole Foods didn't have it, you go to the hippie grocery store. Mm -hmm. And if they didn't have it, like maybe you'd call up the company, but the company wouldn't sell directly to you. Right. They'd tell you to go to like, hey, I know you're in San Diego, but you have to go to New Hampshire if you want these. Right. Yeah, of course. (laughs) So the internet has made it so you can make and sell anything. Doesn't matter really how niche it is. I mean, we, we make paleo desserts. We only make six of them and we pay all our bills from that. It's this tiny little niche. And so you, your entire company only has six SKUs? I mean, you have shirts and stuff too, probably, yep, right? Like yep, gear, but, but like Definitely food-wise. not a million SKUs, nope. Wow. Nope, six, six treats yeah, and a couple different colors. Six that you're incredibly good at. You're incredibly transparent. So you're, you guys are educated on the diet itself. Yep. And yep. make sure that you're not using any, any ingredients that don't follow yep. along the guidelines. And there's a, I mean, there's a ton of pain with that because with selling something that doesn't have any preservatives, doesn't have any stabilizers. There's a ton of work that goes into understanding how do I get a cookie from San right. Diego to Florida in the middle of the summer? And how do I do it in a way where I don't bankrupt us on shipping and the customer doesn't feel like they're getting robbed. Right. And most people have no idea what shipping costs. Well, that's a whole thing. I mean, um, so I, I'm, I'm here You're from California. Right 
What's that? You're learning shipping right now. I am, indeed. Yeah. Um, so you know In-N-Out, right? Mm-hmm. Obviously, they won't ship beyond a certain point because they, won't, they don't want to have unfresh yep. anything in their stores. Yep. And to be honest, they could probably be a 10 times bigger company right now. 100%. If they did that, if they pulled one of the McDonald's or Burger King's models, yep. but they just refuse to do it. And it's bought them a lot of street cred. I'll say that. Yeah. I mean, there, there are people that are loyal to that brand. Hey, right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love in and out And you look at it, kind of going back to that, that model, is you just find who, you figure out what your product is and how you're going to make it the best possible, and then you just let the customers find you, and they get super stoked. You know, we, we kind of laugh because we don't always talk to our customers. I'll put the order in on the Internet, and I see that Joe Smith ordered, and they want, you know, 10 Mustang bars and 10 Benditos, da-da-da. But we don't know what Joe Smith looks like or if he really cares, if it's his first order. Like, if we go in there and dive deep, we can, but it's not an automatic thing. Last week, we ran out of Mustang bars. It's our best seller. It's an almond butter bar. tastes like sweet granola. And we're like, God dang, we're going to have to call all these customers who've ordered them and say, hey, we're really sorry we ran out. And you're thinking, like, you never want to make a mistake as a business. You never want to screw up. It's like, all right, well, we just got to bite it. And we're going to call all these people and say, hey, if you want your money back, if you want us to separate the shipments, like, what can we do to make you happy? Right. And, man, we were calling people all week. And every single call was like, no problem. I want you guys to stay in business always. Whatever it takes for you guys to put it out there. If it takes an extra week, no problem. You know, don't worry about this at all. I love what you're doing. And it just, it blows you away because you kind of go through your day-to-day stuff and with you guys putting out coffee or t-shirts or whatever, and you don't always realize how much your product means to someone right. or that all of the effort that you've put in is actually recognized. And a lot of times as a, as a business owner, it feels like it's not. And you're just like, God, I'm putting these things together and you'll see someone on Facebook like, why are these bars $6? And it's like, well, you know, like my whole sales spiel, but man, you start to reach out to customers and talk to them and, they, and you realize, yes, every single piece of effort that you put in is recognized whether it's conscious or unconscious. People right. like beauty whether they, they admit it or not. You know, People like quality whether they admit it or, or know it or not. Right. So, I think uh, Evan calls that sweat equity. Yes. Sweat equity. Which is a good phrase. Um, what, what, are, what are some of the legal, legal aspects here with food? Sure, it's a good question. So yeah. with prepackaged food, the way that it works is all of the legal responsibility is on the preparer. So what we did by accident, just by wanting to get out of our kitchen, yeah. you know, at the beginning, was found a bakery who would, they were already making other people's stuff, they were already gluten-free, they already met the requirements we had, is we said, hey, we want you guys to make paleo treats. Here's our recipe, we're gonna make the first couple batches with you, once you have it down. You guys, you guys got it. it. You got it, so yeah. for that, we, we kind of lucked into this good move of, of accidentally shifting mm. liability. Nice. And there's yeah. no, like, um, in, in certain areas to get called organic, especially like uh, bigger farmers markets and stuff, you actually have to meet certain requirements and, re- and prove that. And if, if you go anywhere in Italy or France, wine has to be from where it's supposed to be from. The vines get counted. Same thing with cheese. Um, is there anything like that for your for your stuff? I yeah, mean, so there's a couple of terms, organic, gluten-free, right. um, dairy-free, those things. So what we decided early on was that if we went organic for all of our ingredients, it was going to take it from... At the time, it was a $2 bar, and we were going to go out of business selling it at 2 bucks. to a $10 bar, and nobody would buy it. We'd go out of business because no one's right. going to buy a $10 bar. Yeah. So we said, all right, we're not going to do organic. What we're going to do is think about what we want out of these treats and what's really important. So we're going to go gluten-free, which is important to our customer base, and really is kind of the – when you talk about the celiac, there's tons of, of debate over – how many people have it and right. how many people are gluten to- intolerant and how many people aren't, how many people want the attention or well, whatever Well, supposedly there's 3%, but 3%, there's yeah. 320 million people in this country. <laughs> so 3% is a, that's enough. It's that still is, a chunk. Yep. That's a and big chunk. And there's still plenty of people that, uh, that, that are under the, uh, the sway of the psychosomatic stuff. So they, right. they believe that gluten's bad for them. It doesn't matter. Yeah, if it doesn't it is matter if it really is. Yeah. The mind is incredibly powerful and they end up with rashes and allergies and whatever else it is. So <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a wild thing. Um, I've lost where I was going on that one. Oh, you're, I was just asking if there's like certain standards you have to meet. Yeah. So with, with food, it's pretty, like, dis- is there a paleo council? There is a paleo certification process that we decided to do. Um, but in the bigger picture, f- when you, when you get into food manufacturing, it, it was really disturbing to me how little oversight there is and how you can put whatever you want on the label 
and basically nobody checks it. It's an honor system <laughs> in a relatively, I won't say unhonorable society, but a society driven by powerful forces that can sometimes profit overturn. motive honor. Yeah. 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 That was something that was really weird. Was we we're like, okay, uh, where do we send this? It's going to go, you know, obviously it's going to have to go through nine different scientific labs and this and that. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, just uh, send your ingredients to these people. They'll tell you what's in there and we'll get bacon. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so every granola bar you eat, everything you eat, you know, as you get bigger, the FDA starts jumping down on you. But for, for smaller food companies, it's on you. So I was in Italy a couple of years ago, just south of Sorrento, and we went to a creamery. And the guy who made the cheese there, he was showing me this, like, huge binder full of stuff. Like, every month they get their stuff tested. They come check the cows. They check the feed, all kinds of other stuff. I mean, there's, like, all this stuff that's going on there. You other would, countries are way more Nazi about their food than Yeah, big time. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, like, a lot of the preservatives here are banned in the U.K. Yeah. Quite a few. Yeah, yeah. So kind of on the back end of that stuff, the producers that get to it before us say if they're doing organic eggs, then they are, they're responsible for that certification piece. And all we do is when we buy it and we specify organic eggs, if that's what we do, then that's what we get. Right. But um, do you ever do like a spot check on your producer? Yeah. So I go up there. I mean, it's still a small company. I go up there up to the bakery once a week Mm -hmm. and I grab all the cookies we're going to need for the next week to ship out. Next four days. And so we're always because we're always um, unpacking and packing stuff. So I'll bring the box down in the office, put them in the freezer, pull them out. And we've told the employees like, hey, you can eat as many of you want of these, but don't don't you know don't think that you can't have them and they're filling so the girls probably eat one or two a day but there's just constant like every single day is like oh I'll check this out and we found a couple problems as it goes through and when you find the problem like all right no more of that you know a couple of years ago we had a dude for the mustang bar it's like uh when you make it it's like kind of the consistency of doughy oatmeal and so the guys at the bakery usually will put it into the cup that it goes into and then they were pressing it down with this press that flattens it out so it looks nice well one day the dude decided that he didn't have time to find the press and he was just going to press it down with his three knuckles so we had two thousand mustang bars that were made with knuckle marks and we caught that right away you know we'd pull them off because i always see the first ones that come off i'm like dude what is what is this i can't sell these i'm selling five dollar treats like a that's not okay and and b that's not going to sell so the bakery said, hey, we're really sorry, and we'll eat that. So they took the 2,000 bars, and they put them in a corner of the freezer, and they made another 2,000 for us that were flat in the right way. And I watched those guys eat those knuckle press bars for like a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wow, that's, but, <laughs> that's not good. No, but it's, it's just like that's humans, and that's yep. they're kind of like figuring out what they want to do. And if you're right. not sharp and on top of it, then you miss stuff. I, do, I think it's interesting the way that you take care of your employees by giving them free shit. But you use that as a Q quality control QC. thing. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I mean, we're all kind of military, ex-military guys, and you just look at, like, what are the ways that I got treated that I liked, and what are the ways that I got treated that I don't like? And where were the, what were the leadership pieces that I really liked? Like, I always liked being told what was going on. Like, fine, you, you can't do anything about this. We're going to launch. It's going to be 15-foot waves. Like, we're going to do this, but this is what to expect. You're mm-hmm. like, all right. I don't want to do that, but now that I get what's going on, like there's an important piece at the other end, we're going to get there versus like, Hey, just show up at the boat at, you know, 2300 and uh, just be ready for something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's well, yeah. Nick, where can people find your guys' stuff at? Uh, paleo treats.com. Super easy. Super easy to Instagram. Get to. You got Instagram. Yep. On Instagram, paleo treats on Facebook, paleo treats fan on Twitter, paleo treats. So yeah, pretty easily. Findable. Awesome. No, no, no. For anybody that's thinking about doing something in the food industry, you know, you got some good insight here. Totally. And reach <laughs> outsource, out. outsource, outsource, outsource. <laughs> I mean, that, that's definitely part of it. But um, in 2015, FedEx found us. Um, we put in for kind of one of their contests and they said, hey, this is one of the top 10 small businesses in America. And so now we work with FedEx a bunch to do some shipping stuff and shipping perishables and acting as a um, liaison. As a liaison, like a small food expert and a small yeah. biz expert. So anybody, if you're listening to this and you're like, man, I want to get started in small food, hit me up. It's nick at paleotreats.com. So that's something you do directly or do they need to find you on a website somewhere to submit their questions or how does that work? Um, they can they can put it through the contact form on the site cool. or you can just email me directly. That's fine. Awesome. Well, Nick, thanks for stopping in at Black Rifle Coffee. And Daniel, you getting the dust off your hosting voice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We think we're good now? I'm kind, of a, I'm kind of a mumbler, so you just got to turn the... 
the volume up. That's all. It's good to come through loud and clear. <laughs> awesome. Thanks again. And uh, everybody, paleotreats.com. Right on. Thanks. Black Rifle Coffee Company, along with Arson Wave, would like to thank you for tuning in to Blackhearted. Have a great fucking